What is up everybody? In today's tutorial, you are gonna learn how to do GPU resource management in TensorFlow and Keras. It's gonna be a relatively light tutorial. All you need is a working installation of TensorFlow and Keras, and you're good to go. Let's get started. So what precisely do I mean with resource allocation? So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the terminal to see what I mean exactly. So let's clear this out. Uh, so you can see what I mean. Now, if you're in a POSIX type system, uh, you know, like Linux, let's say, which you should be, by the way, uh, if you type NVIDIA-SMI, you get a list of all of the running processes on your GPU. Now you can see that there are two GPUs here and on one of them, it is not utilizing any of the RAM. And on the second one, I'm utilizing 1,787 uh, megabytes. And this is just for regular processes associated with running with XORG, which is basically the uh, the shell, the the uh, graphical user interface for, for Kubuntu. So that's all dedicated to operating system type stuff. Now, if we come over here and we type uh, Python main torch lunarlander.py, what we're gonna see is, oh, that I mistyped Python, typical. Uh, what we're gonna see is that it'll spool up an instance of Python, of uh, Torch, and it will start executing the Lunar Lander environment. So let's come back here and type the same thing and see what we get. We can see that it is utilizing 812 megabytes on GPU zero. So it's running on GPU zero and only taking up about 812 megabytes. Okay, that's pretty lean. That's a pretty good operation. I like that. So let's go ahead and stop it and clear this out so we so we don't get uh, confused. Now let's do the same thing with the uh, TensorFlow code for breakout. Let's say Python main TensorFlow DQN breakout.py. This is from my uh, one of my videos where we're gonna play breakout and it will go ahead and start running on the GPU. Uh, let's see it's loading and should be running momentarily. Yeah, it's running now. Let's go ahead and type the same thing and see what we get. What we see here is that it's using 10,894 megabytes. Now I don't have a functional implementation of this code in PyTorch, but I can assure you it doesn't need that much RAM. Uh, in particular, you can see that it is utilizing almost all of the VRAM. Now, the reason it does this is buried in the TensorFlow documentation. You may be wondering, uh, is this simply a consequence of the fact that we have a huge memory associated with the replay memory for the breakout environment? Uh, no, that's not the case. The, the case is that TensorFlow uh, automatically allocates all of the VRAM on your GPU. Now this may not be a problem, uh, except for the fact that then you can't really run more models on the GPU. So uh, if you wanna run more than one thing on your GPU, then running out of memory is most definitely a problem. Or if you wanna run, let's say, even in particular, you wanna run a PyTorch implementation of something and a TensorFlow implementation of something, or Keras, uh, you can't do it because TensorFlow hogs all of the VRAM. Now, I'm gonna show you how to take this from uh, hogging all of the VRAM and uh, going down into something more reasonable. Now the reason it does this is because, and it's buried within the documentation, is that uh, TensorFlow wants to prevent memory fragmentation. You remember the old days of Windows on uh, regular hard drives where Windows would do this funny thing where it would store fragments of files in different places in your hard drive and so you would have seek times associated with bouncing around on the hard drive trying to find the relevant data for whatever program you're running. Uh, with solid state disks that doesn't really matter because you know they're much much faster than hard disks so you don't really do any disk defragmenting on a solid state disk or at least you shouldn't even bother. Uh, and of course Linux doesn't do that so you should be running the superior operating system to Windows Linux of course uh, but I digress. So uh, TensorFlow does it to prevent memory fragmentation uh, but there is a way around this. I want to show it to you presently. So let's go ahead and head back to our code editor and see a couple different ways of fixing this. So there are two different ways of fixing this and they're both in the documentation. Uh, we're gonna focus on the way that works best with vanilla TensorFlow first and then I'll show you the way that works uh, most uh, m most bestest with uh, Keras. So um, the magic happens here when we go ahead and call the session. So we have an object called a um, TF dot config proto and it's basically an object 
that tells you how to uh, initialize the variables of uh, basically the environment. You know how you want to run your simulations. Uh, and so next thing you want to do is say config GPU underscore options dot uh, allow growth equals true. And what this will do is we'll only allocate uh, as much memory as it thinks is necessary to begin with and it will expand that memory as it becomes necessary. And then when you invoke your session you want to say uh, config equals config. So let's go ahead and save that and we'll head back to the terminal and run the uh, breakout program again. So just a quick reminder when we last ran the breakout program it used 10,894 megabytes. So I already stopped it. Let's go ahead and run it again and see what we get. So it's loading up everything, giving me a bunch of errors, which I started to get after updating to TensorFlow 1.14. I don't know what that's about. All the code still runs just fine, so I tend to ignore it. Uh, if anybody knows the option to suppress those warnings, please let me know in the comments down below because they annoy the crap out of me. So let's go ahead and see how much RAM we are utilizing now. So perfect. It went from 10,000. Uh, 894 down to 4,744 megabytes, uh, which is a far more manageable number. And so this would allow you to run multiple different agents on one GPU. Let's go ahead and run it again, see if it grew a little bit. No, it did not. So let's come back here and actually let's test this. Let's go ahead and um, try it, not DDQN, we want to say Python uh, main TF DQN breakout. And let's see if we can actually run two different models at the same time. Uh, previously, this would give you a CUDA out of memory error. Uh, here it's okay loading the dynamic libraries. All signs look good. And there it goes, it is playing a second game. So why is this useful? So this is really useful if you wanna perform um, hyperparameter tuning in real time. So what you would do is you would refer back to my previous video on how to automate uh, testing of agents and reinforcement learning using the command line and you would uh, incorporate some extra parameters to enable this particular feature of allowing the GPU uh, memory growth and then you would run two different agents, three different agents. In fact let's go over here and see how much uh, VRAM we're utilizing now. Let's see, and it's double precisely what you would expect, 9481, pretty good. So uh, we, could, we couldn't fit in a third model, unfortunately. We can only do two at one time, but hey, you can't have everything. Uh, but the point is that you can take two different learning rates or even two different model architectures and run them in parallel and uh, get output to see which one you like better, which one looks more promising, and then take that one and then perhaps test it against another set of parameters in a round robin type style. So that is quite useful in TensorFlow. What about Kara? So in Keras, we don't have the uh, config, so you know can, uh, Keras obscures all that from us. So how would we do that in Keras? Let's head back to the uh, code editor and find out. So I'll go ahead and upload this to my GitHub. Um, you may have to hunt around for it. I can actually, maybe I'll even put it in the README at some point. I don't really want this to be obscured because I think this is an important feature of TensorFlow, and it's and it's kind of buried in the documentation. You really have to go looking for it. Um, but I'll go ahead and comment this out and upload this to the GitHub. And if I can remember to do it, I will uh, add it to the README, which I need to kind of uh, go through the README and redo it basically because it's really outdated. But I'll update the README if at all possible. So this is for the TensorFlow implementation of a DeepQ network. And this was tested in the breakout environment. Now how would you do it in Keras? So there is a different way of doing this and it's a little bit more platform specific. I haven't tested it on my Windows implementation. I don't have access to a Mac. Uh, I don't believe in paying more for less so I don't have a Mac. Uh, although I suppose I could build a Hackintosh that might be kind of fun but I suspect that this will work on uh, Apple products as well because they're POSIX based, you know, they're FreeBSD based so the environment variable is probably the same. If not, you could find it on a with a Google search. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you import OS because we're going to be tinkering with the environment variables. So, um, sorry about that. So my uh, instance of OBS Studio bugged out right after I was extolling the virtues of Linux. Uh, of course, it would do that at the most inopportune time. 
Uh, but the idea here is that we're going to make use of some environment variables to actually set the parameters for our GPU. So I'll give you a couple bonus ones uh, if you have a multi-GPU system because they're quite helpful. Uh, so first off, make sure that you have imported OS. That's always important when you're dealing with environment variables. So you want to set OS.environ. And the first parameter I'm going to set is CUDA device device order equals equals uh, PCI bus ID. Now what this will do is set the CUDA device or order variable to the PCI bus ID. So when we were looking at the NVIDIA dash SMI output, how it had zero and one, it means that it will designate my GPUs as zero and one. This is really helpful when you are running multi GPU setups. Uh, if you in particular wanted to run, let's say four sets of parameters, you would have you know, with the breakout environment, you'd have two sets on each GPU, and then you would pass in a command line parameter that would set the actual device as well as the parameters you wanted to test in your uh, environment. And then the next command you want is CUDA visible devices. And that equals, in this case, zero. It has to be passed in as a string. All inputs to this must be a string. Um, and what this will do is it'll send this particular instance of whatever we run here, TensorFlow, Keras, uh, or even PyTorch, this works in PyTorch as well. It'll send all of it to whichever GPU designate, so zero or one in this case. Uh, and if you have other designations, then by your PCI bus ID, then you'll use other designations. The variable we're most interested in for the purposes of this tutorial is the um, TF force uh, GPU allow growth and that gets set to true in lower case, not capital case, or not not uh, first letter capitalized as you would use in a Boolean variable with Python, uh, just lower case true. So let's go ahead and save that. Now we'll go back to the terminal and start running this uh, to see the actual output of it. Actually, let's you know let's do this. Let's let's go ahead and comment this out to see what it uses by default. Then we'll come back and set it, uh, uncomment it, and see how much we save. So let's head to the terminal and do that. So let's come here and clear all of this, and we will run Python main keras ddqn. This is from my most recent video, which you should check out on a uh, double deep Q network. Okay, so it is running. Now let's see how much RAM we are using. So in this case, it uses 10,612 megabytes, almost the entire 10,989 megabytes. And you can see that goes on uh, GPU ID zero here, and then GPU one is running uh, all the stuff associated with the uh, operating system. So let's go ahead and stop that. And then we're gonna go, we're just gonna use nano because all we need to do is uncomment one line. So let's go ahead, uncomment that, control X, save, and then run it one more time. And let's see what we get. Okay, let's run this bad boy again. And we can see it is using 368 megabytes to run. I believe the, uh, the PyTorch implementation was more than that, I don't remember, but uh, either way, it's not using much RAM. And in this case, if you wanted to test with the Lunar Lander environment, you could do, I don't know, close to 30 different variations if you wanted to keep track of 30 tabs on your uh, terminal. So quite useful for hyperparameter tuning and testing. And you can verify it does run on GPU zero. Uh, so it does everything we would expect it to do. So that is quite handy. That works with Keras. The, of course, the variable TF force GPU allow growth won't work with Torch, but the CUDA visible devices and CUDA, CUDA device order will work with PyTorch as well. That allows you to transfer it from one GB to another. And of course, PyTorch has a more sane method of allocating VRAM from the very beginning. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. If you uh, found it helpful, then please share this, like, comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.